So just thoughts on obesity and is that something people could control right now? Does it seem like it's going to be a real factor in, in this disease? Yeah. Well, the, the, the only data we I have on that, that that I can actually relate to published literature is the, uh, the, the uh, British uh, National, it's called ICNARC, the, 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 the British Intensive Care Research uh, Survey. And, and they monitored the first 196 patients. Now, I can't remember the precise figures, but no one was admitted to intensive care who were underweight. About 30% were normal weight, but about 70% were overweight or obese or morbidly obese. Now, a lot of people have said, well, so what? That, that reflects the general population. But in actual fact, I can't give you the precise figure on it, but the, the proportion of people that were overweight or obese that were admitted to intensive care, though therefore had critical illness, was above the, the normal uh, distribution of being overweight and obesity in the population. So it looks like that is being a factor to an extent. But there again, of course, if someone has obesity, they're more likely to have type 2 diabetes. They're more likely to have breathing problems. They're more likely to have cardiovascular disease. So it's, I think what they've identified is a degree of correlation, not necessarily a degree of, of causality with okay. the obesity one. So, but I certainly would advise everyone to optimize their health now as much as they can. So lose weight if you can eat nutritious food, have a good diet. I believe it's necessary to make sure you've got adequate amounts of vitamin D because we don't make vitamin D in English winters. If you smoke, absolutely stop smoking. There's benefit in that straight away. Your cilia will be working better within 24 hours if you stop smoking. And Dr. Tedros has advised people to moderate their alcohol consumption or even stop drinking as well. I don't know quite what his evidence for that is, but I guess it's just general exercise and well-being. We need to make sure we get plenty of exercise and we need to make sure we get plenty of sleep. And as far as we can, we want to reduce our psychological stress because all of these things help the immune system. Now, lots of people talk about immune boosting. We can't make the immune system better than it is because we have a good physiological immune system, but we can certainly make it worse than it is by, by having such things as, as malnutrition or, or lack of sleep. And, and I'm just glad you mentioned that, that the people giving birth there, Brian. Um, I, I, I'm on record as predicting there's going to be a bit of a baby boom in December. <laughs> um, I think the reasons for that are probably fairly obvious uh, with people being confined for long periods of time. Um, but the thing that's really concerning there is if there is, as you suggested, um, a winter wave of uh, a second wave of COVID over winter, especially if we have a bad flu season, then that means we're going to have the infective problems of potentially influenza and COVID-19, all the other usual winter things we get, all the other ongoing medical things that we get, and potentially a lot of, a lot of people giving birth all at the same time. So I think there's probably a real factor to consider there as well.